Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we're back on the Hermitcraft server. It is episode 27, and we're currently over here in the middle of Hermit Hills, ready to start recording another video. And I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a while since I've been over here. The reason I'm here is I've just popped through the nether, because I was just in the desert, picking up a bunch of resources. As you can see, I've got a ton of sand on me, and this time I'm not going to be turning all of that into glass, we are actually going to be using it in its raw form because for those of you who saw Monday evening's live stream which for those of you who don't know Monday evening is now the time for mumbo jumbo live streams that is when they are officially going to be going every single week Monday evening 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. GMT every single week and probably going to be streaming Hermitcraft so if you do want to see one of my streams that is when you can find them but in that stream we started work on the microbiome on the inside of the bowl over by the hostile mob farm so as you guys know, I had a few ideas for that place, but sadly, they weren't going to particularly work due to the changes in colours of swamp biomes and things, which I don't particularly like. So I asked you guys for a little bit of help, and you came out in your thousands, okay? There was tons and tons of brilliant comments. Some of them were really awesome. For example, the ice biome, I really like that. There was a maza biome. Somebody suggested a yin yang, which I thought would have been really cool. And someone else suggested stone brick the entire thing which would have been tempting in series two but of course in series three we aren't going to be touching the stuff so what we were actually going to be doing though is we're going to be building a micro desert so let's head over there and i'll show you what i've done already we really really need to make this minecart rail bunny proof that is the second time my minecart has crashed into one of these little fellas and been sent back in the opposite direction. It's infuriating! So after running a couple hundred blocks to get over here, we have finally made it to the bowl area. And this is how it is looking so far. As you can see, I have placed sand in most of the area. We just have this tiny bit left to go. And actually, I've got a few things that I want to talk about in today's episode. But I think I'm going to leave those for a little while because I'm going to get down to business and we're going to be doing a little bit of building. And you know what? Even though this is a very, very tiny segment, I do want to experiment with a new time-lapsing technique that XB Crafted actually taught me. By using spectator mode, slowing the player down, then moving them forwards whilst tabbing out allows you to have a moving time-lapse that I think looks really cool. So now we're going to do an experiment whilst I do this final bit of the mumbo jumbo bowl. Okay, so that is all done. The entire bowl is now looking very sandy indeed, and I personally really like the way that this looks. I think it looks nice and bright and light, and the entire build itself is actually really coming together now, which I think is very, very nice indeed. But one thing I do just want to ask you guys is, what did you think to that new time-lapse technique? I personally think it looks really, really good. It's much better than your regular time-lapse, even if it's a little bit more fiddly to do for me, and also it's quite tough to work to that time frame. I kept looking over to my screen and thinking, oh no, I'm running out of time here. My camera guy is gonna go straight past the point in which I'm digging. And I'm gonna have to hurry up a little bit. It was a little bit tough to work to that sort of deadline, but I would say it looked pretty cool. I would say it was much better than your regular time lapse and it's worth the extra effort that I have to put in. So please let me know down in the comment section if you wanna see more of those sorts of time lapses. But anyway, we aren't going to be leaving this area as bare as a baby's bottom. We don't want anything like that. What we want to do is start adding some stuff around here. Now obviously this is going to be your regular deserty stuff, cactus, your sugar cane, and also a few little ornaments and things. So I'm going to try and come up with some ideas in my head, and then I'll start placing them down. One idea that I've had is I'm going to split up the desert area into a set of rivers. So here we have a river that comes in from here, it flows all the way down here. We actually have a split in the river as well, so some of it is going to go off in this direction and some of it is going to head off in this direction. I think that will look really very cool and it will allow us to split up any of the builds that we plan on doing here because 
There's not going to be many big structures in this area. I don't plan on adding many houses, although I think that would be quite a nice thing to add in the future. Most of it is just going to be foliage. We're going to have trees, we're going to have a few sugarcane about, and there's also going to be obviously a couple of cactuses as well. But it'll be interesting to see where it goes, so now I have to chuck all of the water into this river area, and we'll see how it looks like once it's done. All of the water is now in for the river, the H2O is flowing strongly, and I have to say it really has made the difference. It's a small difference, but it has made a difference, and that is a positive thing. Beforehand, it looked like a big sand pit, now it's actually being broken up into different segments. We've got the nice little bit of water going through the middle. I think it looks really cool, and we can definitely work around this to make an awesome looking area. Of course, we aren't going to be leaving it like this. As I've mentioned many times now, we are going to be adding vegetation in the form of cactus and sugarcane. And it's really good that I added in the river, because one thing that I hadn't thought of is the fact that sugarcane actually requires water to be there. So otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to do that, and it would have been just cactuses, which wouldn't have looked quite so good. So I'm going to gather up some resources, and I'll pop back here, and we'll see what we can construct. Welcome to this week's episode of heading over to XB Crafted's base and being absolutely blown away by some of his builds. This is his tree farm and it's incredibly impressive. I mean, this is a cool looking area, but I've got to tell you, I'm a little bit more impressed by what you actually come through to get to this place. So let's head up this minecart elevator here and then hop outside the minecart and let's take a look at this build. So we just have to head around here. We are following XB as he goes. This is what I'm talking about, okay? Boom. Look at how cool this area looks. Now, I've actually been watching his episodes and I watched him build this thing, so I know how much time and effort has gone into this, but it is such an impressive area. What a cool space. XB Crafted, definitely one of my favorite bases on Hermitcraft, and you guys already know that. I've spoken about that so many times in previous episodes, but every time I come over here, there's something new and awesome to look at. Well, I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, I have been spending around about 45, maybe 50 minutes of doing all of this stuff and I am massively, massively disappointed, okay? I, I will safely say that I am hugely disappointed in what's occurred here, and I just thought I would keep you updated with my disappointment, okay? So far, I've been disappointed on my own. Now I'm going to bring you in on the disappointment because, as I'm sure you can tell, just looking at this place, it doesn't look vibrant, okay? It doesn't look like the pleasant oasis that I had in my head. That was my idea, okay? I thought it was going to look like a nice oasis out here in the middle of the water. It was going to look awesome, but it just looks dead. I think dead is the only word that I can use to describe this. My sugar cane just looks off. I mean, how horrible is that? That is a horrible looking color, so that doesn't work. My trees definitely look like they're dying, okay? They don't look like they're faring too well with the desert climate, so it looks like they're going, going out. I mean, seriously, it just... It just doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to work. My idea of the lovely desert in the middle of the dome Seems so good in my head, but sadly it just doesn't seem to have worked in Minecraft, which occasionally is the case, and occasionally you have to take a step back and go, is this project actually going to be successful? And you know what? I'm starting to think that maybe it might not be. So we might have to work a little bit more on this in a future episode of Hermitcraft, maybe come back to it with a fresh idea, fresh mind, and see what we can do with it. However, I am starting to get some ideas of other things that we can do with this area if the desert idea never really pans out. For example, of course, the snowy biome, that could definitely work with the slightly darker colours. I mean, nothing's perfect, okay? These swamp colours, they really are cramping my style, okay? I really don't like them. I've never liked the swamp colours, but it's something that we're definitely going to have to work around. So I think maybe a winter biome could potentially work, but other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm lost, okay? I'm completely lost. So this hasn't been the most successful start to the episode, but hopefully we can move on from this onwards and upwards because I've got a few things to chat to you about and also a few awesome things to show you that some of the other hermits have been working on. So here we are in this new area that most of you probably haven't seen before unless of course you watch Tango Tech and Impulse SV because we are currently over by the Quad Witch House, but they have had a bit of a revamp. Tango Tech and Impulse have been working incredibly hard on getting all of this up and running, getting all of the witch huts connected together, and I have to say, they have done a fantastic job. Look at this place. First off, it looks absolutely amazing. Great work on the decorating side of things, but on the functional side of things, it works like an absolute charm. I mean, as you can see here, we have got ourselves tons and tons of redstone. We've got ourselves tons of water bottles, loads of glowstone as well. 
well. I'm assuming glowstone is being taken relatively quickly as that is the most valuable resource coming from the witch farm here. But yeah, there is just loads and loads of resources all flowing into all of these chests and it really does work wonderfully. Around the sides you can see these are all of the item elevators for all of the separate items which is a really cool way of doing it and also the redstone behind this thing is absolutely amazing now if you saw monday afternoon's live stream or of course if you do watch tango and impulse then you will have seen this being built but other than that you are in for a treat because this is a wonder of minecraft engineering so here we go we are going down the ladder here and we are going to make our way into the redstone chamber at least i hope we are now i really do hope i don't break anything by standing down here but would you look at this sorting system, alright? It is an incredibly impressive area. What we have here is a bunch of different item sorters separated by the water, okay? So all of the item drops flow in through these holes here, they travel along the water streams, and then they go into this big O, okay? All of the items flow around like this, and then on the sides of the big O, what we have is a few item sorters that will pick out the items and then they will dispense them into these item elevators here and that will take them up to the storage elevator. And if they don't get picked up by the item sorter first time, then they will actually make their way back around the O so that they can do a full loop. It's a cool system. It seriously is very, very cool indeed. I've never really seen one of this scale before and I have to say, I am very impressed. So if you do want to check out Tango Tech and Impulse SV, then links to them can be found down in the description. This next announcement comes on a little bit of a down note, at least for some of you, but I hate to inform you, Spumwack is going to stop recording Minecraft Let's Play episodes on the Hermitcraft server, which really is a bit of a shame because of course his Let's Play episodes are extremely good and he is a lovely part of the community, but he has decided to shift his focus from Minecraft Let's Plays over to his Minecraft Science videos. And I have to say, I'm actually a little bit excited for this because Spumwax Minecraft Science videos are some of my favourite episodes on YouTube and of course I'll put links to Spumwax channel down in the description as well as links to those science videos because I'm sure all of you will find them very very interesting. So I personally cannot wait to see what comes out of Spumwax channel in the future, I'm sure it is going to be absolutely awesome and I am just a little bit sad that we have lost a member of the community but like I say, cannot wait to see what comes out of Spumwax, it's going to be great. So that is enough talking, that is enough wittering on from me, we're now going to be cracking on with the next project that I have got planned for today's episode, and that is connecting up this base area here to our minecart track. It's getting really annoying having to parkour across all of these trees to get to the minecart track, so I thought I would add in just a little bit of an area, okay? So this is going to be like a little minecart junction in which we can either turn off left to go to all of the mob spawn and all that sort of thing, or in the future when we actually make our base, we can continue straight on and travel up into the mountain. So yes, we're going to create that little branch off right now in today's episode. It is going to go from this area here all the way out across this area and then probably down underwater to take us into the base. So I'm currently in the process of mining out the tunnel to take us out into the base area. As you can see, I've lined it up to perfection. We have got the middle of the base in line with the middle part of the tunnel, which is absolutely perfect. The only thing that I am a little bit concerned about if we just head over to this side is the fact that our tunnel turns off where this thing is. Okay, so I don't really know what to do in this situation. I could move it back a little bit, but that would look strange and you guys would go mad because this has got a seven block gap and that would mean that this has got a nine block gap, which wouldn't be particularly good. So yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that, but for now I'm just going to continue clearing out the tunnel and then I guess we've got to decorate it. You know, just a couple of seconds ago, I said I had lined it up to perfection. That wasn't entirely the case because I have messed it up. It is off-centered. By one block. I mean, I should I should really check this sort of thing before I go making claims like that because now I look just a little bit silly. The tunnel is done and decorated. Now all I have to do is grab my powered rails and place them running all the way down it like this. We're going to have a redstone block right there as well. So we'll chuck that down there and we will just place all of these in. They're going to run right the way down here and off out into the distance. Now one thing that I am wondering is how I am going to do this little decline section because I haven't actually had to worry about any form of slope. I haven't had to do any decline, incline or anything like that on the Great Rail project. So it's something that I haven't really thought of in terms of logistics, how I'm actually going to go about doing it. But one thing that I am considering is using the spruce wood supports that I have done a couple of times in the past with the cobblestone walls and then the half slabs that are holding up the entire thing. I think that looks pretty good 
and it could work fairly nicely for our actual decline. However, I'm starting to wonder how I'm going to do the half slabs on either sides because they won't look particularly good. Hmm. This is going to require a little bit more thought than I first imagined, so I'm going to have to go away, try and come up with some ideas, and then I'll start placing down some blocks. But one thing that I do want to say is this looks fantastic from this angle, doesn't it? So I've actually been experimenting with the placement of the half slabs. As you can see on the right hand side here, we've got it one block lower and on the left hand side, we have got this fairly large wall. And you know what? I really don't like the large wall. You can't see out. That's not something I particularly like. When I'm riding my minecart, you know, it's a long journey. It's something that I want to be able to spend time looking about. That is the main reason why we actually did the minecart track is so that we could have a nice scenic view right the way along all the way over to my base. So I'm going to be doing this entire thing using this technique of placing down the half slabs. So that is half slabs right there, I do believe. Or have I done that wrong immediately? Is that not correct? I think it is like this. And then we have the half slabs down there. Okay, so that is how you do it. We have the two like that. And then we have it like this. So it's basically a three high half slab wall. But we have it only one high above these. So that means that all of our rails are going to go down like this. And we'll be able to see above all of the half slabs. We still get the impression of having a nice safety wall. Because that's the sort of thing that I like in Minecraft. I know that it doesn't make a difference. There's no chance of the player falling out of the minecart. But it's just one of those things. It makes it feel a lot more real. And that's always good. The spruce wood supports are now in. You could say that they look a little bit on the silly side. I mean, they're not my best looking build in the world. But you know what? They do the job. Okay, they do the job. They look like they're supporting the build. And that is happy days for me. Okay, I'm perfectly happy with that. And also in terms of our minecart rail, as you can see, I've chucked down all of the redstone blocks. So now it is all fully powered and ready to go. If we wanted to, we could grab ourselves a minecart and travel right the way along this and right the way down to the bottom. But of course, that's not really that much good. Okay, if we got down to here, we'd just land in the puddle. We'd get our knees wet. And you know what? That's not what we want to do. So we need to continue the minecart track all the way across here. And I think we're going to get to around about this sort of area. And then we'll begin going underneath the waves. And we'll travel right the way down here and into the bottom part of our little desert biome. And you know what? One thing I am going to say is that as I've been looking at this from afar, I'm starting to sort of like what we have going on down here. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but it certainly looks okay. As you can see here, I've got all of my slabs in place. This is the area in which the minecart is going to be traveling along. So it's going to go all the way across here and then it's going to travel down here and run across all of these slabs. Now also what I'm in the process of doing is I'm placing down all of the glass that is making up the walls of our tunnel. So this is the final part that needs to be done. Now we'll place in these final blocks and there we go. That is our tunnel all complete. These are going to be the walls. They're going to be holding back the water. At some point, I think I am going to add in some sea lanterns on the side because I think that will look a whole bunch better. But for now, there is one slightly large problem. Our tunnel is somewhat full of water. So we're going to have to get rid of this and I'm not going to be using sponges this time simply because they were a hassle, okay? Sponges definitely were a bit of a hassle. So instead, we are going to be using the tried and tested method of dropping sand into the hole, clearing out all of the water, getting rid of all that, allowing us to place down the blocks as if there wasn't any water there. It has been a while since I've had to do anything like this. Brings back fond memories of building underwater bases. All of the sand is now in, so that should mean that in theory all of the water is now gone. And as you can see already, I've cleared out a tiny section, all of that water is gone, and we have ourselves a very, very nice, almost an aquarium little tunnel here, which I'm pretty excited to use. But anyway, now I'm just going to continue walking along, holding down left click, holding my shovel, taking out all of this sand so that we can clear out this area. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, the rail project is now complete. The rail runs right away from up there all the way down here into this underwater section and off into the base. And I have to say, I cannot get enough of this view. Let me just get over here, walk up a little bit further, stand on top of this redstone block. I have to say that it just looks so incredibly impressive. I'm pretty happy with myself with this build because as I say, it was never built to look good. I never meant it to actually look nice, but I feel like I've done a half decent job and making everything look at least all right. Okay, now if we head through into the middle here, of course there is some extra work to be done on the micro desert biome because as you can see, 
It looks a little bit odd. It definitely looks a lot more odd now that everything is three blocks tall. I've got to sort that out somehow. Maybe I could place string on top of all of these sugarcane to prevent them from growing. Either way, I'm sure we can come up with a solution. And I'm sure that you guys down in the comment section will also give me some pretty good ideas. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.